What's going on people, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another episode of Things We Learned And is this gonna be an interesting episode or what? It's four things we learned from Wolves 2, Chelsea 1 Do you remember me being here on Friday or Thursday and saying all we had to do was win two games Our next two games and then we're guaranteed to go either first place or second place We didn't win a single one we actually didn't even get a point from both of those games. Talk about overconfidence, but we are going to delve deeper into this game, further into the video. We're going to discuss the biggest talking points from Wolves 2, Chelsea 1, because I'm sure just as you guys are thinking, there is plenty of things to discuss in this video. So, before we start, as usual, if you haven't done so already, hit that like button, press that subscribe button, hit the bell notification button as well. Get yourself that little hat trick, because if we got one yesterday, we probably would have won the game. So, if you guys haven't done so already, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button and let's go straight into four things we learned from Wolves 2 Chelsea 1. First point and I'm just gonna strip go straight out and say it Frank Lampard his overcautiousness is really going to cost us in the long run and today was just yet another example of it. It was another performance where there was just late substitutes and they all came in and they had barely any impact on the game as a result. I thought the decisions we made during the match didn't help us as well, but they hindered us. And this, again, isn't to say Lampard out, and I throw this disclaimer nearly every single time I criticise Lampard. But there is, a, there is a pattern of things that I'm seeing against the big sides in the league that we keep doing. And the, one of the biggest things that I'm seeing on a regular basis is late subs. And this one, I don't even think just counts to the top 12 in general. This could be just anyone we play. When do we put subs out before the 65th minute? When do we do that? Even though me, you, anyone watching the watch along in the comment section, literally anybody watching the game can tell the sorts of decisions that we meet that we need to make, the substitutions that would probably come on and have some impact in the game. But we only made two subs. They both came after the 70th minute again. So it meant that they had barely any impact or any influence on the game. And we didn't even make all three of our subs, which was the most baffling part. Like, I get that we have a bunch of injuries, but there still could have been options off the bench. If we're lacking a winger, we should have put Tino Andrin back on the bench. I don't even care about lack of experience. We needed a winger. This is the same thing as the Everton match where we needed a natural winger on the pitch because as usual, Timo Werner was not working on the left-hand side. I don't care how inexperienced Tino Andrin is. Baptism by fire, I don't care. Didn't Wolves put someone out for their debut in the second half against us? And they still went and turned the game round. So it doesn't really matter too much about experience. We all knew the midfield needed to be changed, not in the 70, 75th minute, because what is the point after that? Billy Gilmore could have come in at any point in that second half and provided the midfield with a bit more control and probably would have had a better performance than either Kai Havertz or Mason Mount would have done in the entire match. The only reason why I keep persisting with mentioning this is because it just keeps happening and I feel like it's costing us too many points. I'm not saying Lampard's a poor manager or anything, but I think generally against the top sides in the league, he generally gets too overcautious. I don't know if there is a plan B or not with him, especially with this formation, if he sees anything that he can change up. And I can understand the injuries are probably hindering his options as well. But if there are natural options that we can use, we should utilize them. If a player is stinking up the pitch, we need to take them off. It was another thing like the Spurs game where it was clear as day Havertz needed to come off, but we didn't do it. Like the Spurs game when it was clear that Tammy Abraham needs to come off for Olivier Drew. We didn't do it and we spent too long persisting on, on something that just wasn't working. And that's what's held us back. So point number one, Lampard, too overcautious. We need to make these subs earlier. Second point, and this probably links to Frank Lampard too, but we're going to talk about the attack as well in this one. Stop playing Timo Werner on the left. I'm I'm actually done with it. Like I've been willing to experiment with it. I've been willing to give it time. I don't care now. I am finished with it. I will happily take Timo Werner on the right any day of the week over Timo Werner on the left. Fact is, Christian Pulisic was absolutely balling out on that left-hand side in the first half. Him... Chilwell, Mason Mount, they were all giving Semedo nightmares for that first half. Most of our attack was coming down that left-hand flank as well. So what did we do at half-time? We moved Pulisic back to the right. And then we moved Timo Werner back to the left. 
where to be fair, Werner was having a quiet game anyway, but his impact looked a lot better on the right hand side than it's ever looked on the left hand side, because at the very least you're keeping the ball onto his stronger foot. We put him back onto the left hand side, where his play just became predictable again. R race up and down that left hand side, try cut inside and get onto your stronger right foot and then hit a shot. It was just predictable. At least with Christian Pulisic, he offers you so much different options. He can go inside with the ball, he can go outside with the ball, he can lick a shot in, he can lick a cross in, he can create space for Ben Chilwell to come in on the left hand side. The most Timo Werner offers you on that left hand side is link up play and one twos with Ben Chilwell. Like, that's fine in setting up play, but he's a finisher. He is a striker. We're not playing him in his best position. And I understand that as well as a little bit because we're, we're trying to get a focal point too. And I'm not saying bench Olivier Giroud as well because Olivier Giroud's form looked good. And I'm going to go into that later on in the video as well. But the fact is, Timo Werner at the left just doesn't work. I've said it plenty of times. He's at his best if he's in strike and he can roam into left wing and maybe take a few defenders with him. If you start him there, his play is just completely predictable. At the very least, on the right-hand side, if he beats a man, he has the entire a right hand side free and he can put a cross in if we use like the third goal against uh, Leeds United as an example man race down the right hand side and it was an easy ball to find Christian Pulisic he is not doing that on the left hand side I, I don't get why we changed it. Something was working and we changed it straight back to the thing that doesn't work. This game, if anything, confirmed my belief. I am finished with seeing Timo Werner play as left wing. You guys let me know if you agree or disagree with me down in the comment section below. But bruv, I'm done with it. Christian Pulisic showed exactly what we've been missing on the left hand side. And I accept that a big reason for why Werner has been playing there has been because of injuries to our wingers. With Hudson Doy being out for ages. Same with Ziyech. Same thing with Christian Pulisic as well. I understand. Now, I don't care. I want it done. I know Christian Pulisic... No, the good thing is actually we have a six-day break, so we could start the West Ham game as well. Please play Pulisic on the left, Timo Werner on the right, and please don't change it. Third point, and our concentration levels really needed to be stronger in the second half, and I think that's another area of the game where we let ourselves go too much. Second half, I thought we were massively complacent, and Wolves eventually made us pay for it. Everyone in their nan knows Wolves' style of play, especially when they had five at the back in this sort of game. It was exactly the same thing we saw from Everton, but we just fell right into their hands, and we just started overcommitting bodies too much. I don't know if it's a fatigue thing. I don't think fatigue is a great excuse either, seeing as Wolves would have played on the weekend exactly the same as us and they would have played on the Thursday on the Tuesday against us exactly the same sort of schedule so I don't think fatigue amounts too much into this but we overcommitted bodies way too much and we fell right into Wolves' hands they knew exactly what they wanted to do they wanted to sit deep wait for us to put too many bodies forward and then use Daniel Podus and Jota's pace no not Jota's pace and um, Diego Neto's pace to try and beat us and that is exactly what happened the second goal as well you talk about over committing. 95th minute. Like, I, I get us chasing the victory, but chase the victory to a point. Why did we only have two players back? It was so bait that we were going to potentially get hit on the counter attack. And look what happened. We went and got hit on the counter attack. The annoying thing about a situation like that is because we played these sorts of games and we have been a lot smarter. I don't get why we were so stupid in the second half. So Spurs game as a huge example, we had more of the chances, we attacked a lot more than Tottenham did, but we didn't overcommit, we never put too many bodies forward. Why did we do that? Because we knew what Spurs could do on the counter attack. Why was it so different in this game? Why was it so different? What? Because we lost the lead and now we have something we need to change. That's just poor game management in my opinion. You know exactly the sort of team that Wolves are. But we played right into their hands. Here's the thing. I'll cuss Arteta all I want. This game looked exactly like the North London derby. Where you just sat there and you played the exact style of play that the opposition would have wanted. And that is exactly what we did. Add the spamming crosses for all game. I don't really know what we were trying to do in this match. This match... 
I don't, I don't know. I'm calling it fatigue. I'm calling it poor game management as well. I'm calling it a mixture of factors into one, as well as player disaster classes in the entire midfield. But a big issue was concentration levels. We know exactly what team Wolves are, and we played exactly into their hands. Final point, and we're going to talk about Giroud versus Tammy Abraham. Now, after the Everton game, no one would have brain Frank Lampard if he made a lot of changes to the attack because our attack was completely toothless and. To be fair, Giroud missed a massive chance in the second half of that game as well. But he chose to persist with Olivier Giroud. And even though we missed a couple chances, I do think it worked out to our benefit. I think our link-up play was very solid. There was a focal point to look for with the crosses. There was a good couple chances as well. We were so dominant in the air with uh, between Thiago Silva, Zuma, Ben Chilwell and Olivier Giroud on the pitch. And it eventually paid off because we scored a goal coming off a corner. Only issue though is when Olivier Jude came off, whatever fluidity we had left was gone. Like Tammy Abraham came on and you could see the golfing class in the attack. And here's the thing, our attack was already semi-finished anyway because we just moved Timo Werner into the left for no reason. But as soon as we brought Tammy Abraham on, I think the form just dipped even more. And I, like you can see the golf and class in the two players. And I'm only saying this is a point that I think Olivier Drude has definitely pulled himself back to that number two starting striker spot. And here's the thing, it's never going to be to say Tammy Abraham's finished. I do think it's going to be a revolving circle of things, especially with Timo Werner's form right now. Because right now he is dipping and he'll also pull himself back up. No one's going to say Timo Werner's dusted or anything. But my final point, Olivier Giroud right now, he is definitely putting himself into Frank Lampard's good books. And he is a striker that we cannot be getting rid of in January. But guys, this is the end of the video today. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with any of my thoughts down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another, for another video. Take care and up the chels.